Good morning. Welcome to the forecast discussion for November 24th, 2014, the Monday before Thanksgiving, and we have a very active weather pattern. Let's see, we have record high temperatures, we have heavy rain, we have a winter storm, we have ice, and we have cold temperatures. We have pretty much everything. It's the Thanksgiving version of weather. And it's going to be a very tricky forecast over the next several days. So I'm going to explain to you the forecast and why I did what I did with the snow map. That way you have an understanding of what the models are doing and why I did what I did. And yes, I know that some people went higher in certain locations. I'll explain to you why I didn't. So first of all, here we have the surface ob observations. And we have temperatures are very warm, right? upper 50s to lower 60s over the interior, lower to mid 60s along the coast. Keep this in mind, this warms the land, the ground. Okay, so you have a very warm ground setting in here. And you have temperatures today pushing into the mid 60s over the interior and upper 60s to lower 70s along the coast for highs today. Two days before a winter storm that's going to develop. It's an important factor to keep in mind when you're dealing with accumulating snowfall on the ground, especially on pavement. So here we have an environment that is very warm. And the reason why we have such a warm environment is we have a strong warm front, excuse me, that is lifting north into New England today that will continue to produce periods of moderate to heavy rainfall throughout this morning and then exit into New England by the time we get to noon. So most locations like the Philadelphia metropolitan area are done with the heavy rain. Locations to the north of New York City, you're still going to see some periods of moderate heavy rain until noon and everyone dries out. There'll be a threat for scattered showers for this afternoon as this cold front slowly approaches the region. But for the most part, we're dealing with very beautiful weather conditions for this afternoon, at least with temperatures in the mid to upper 60s. Remember a couple of days ago, we were struggling to break 33 degrees and now we're hitting 70s. So this is the type of weather that unfortunately can get everyone sick and, and typically leads to my cough that I've been dealing with forever. And yes, I've tried everything, so sorry. I've tried honey, lozenges, cough medicine, doesn't seem to work. And of course I go to a doctor and they say, well, you have a cough. Thanks. Okay, so here we have our radar here, and you can see the moderate to heavy rainfall lifting northward. Again, the bulk of the steady heavy rain is pretty much over for the region, but we're going to be dealing with these on and off widely scattered showers throughout the day today with variable cloud cover and temperatures very warm. I don't expect any thunderstorms, at least no severe thunderstorms in any way, shape, or form, but you could see a little bit of rumble of thunder every so often with an elevated thunderstorm. Other than that, it's going to just be one of those very warm days. Enjoy it while you can because once that cold front moves through, our temperatures fall back gradually to near normal levels. Now let's take a look at the infrared satellite picture. And first of all, you can see that warm front lifting north. Here's your scattered cloud cover for this afternoon with a few scattered showers. And here's our cold front. So it looks pretty pedestrian, right? When we zoom out and look at North America on the water vapor satellite loop, you can see our situation starting to set up. First thing I want you to really notice here, no blocking in the northern Atlantic. You have a trough that's very progressive. There's nothing here to keep a high pressure system in place over Maine. Remember that. Keep that in the back of your mind. So here we have the Pacific. You have a nice trough digging. As I discussed yesterday in the uh, afternoon discussion I put out for Thanksgiving, so here's our trough digging, here's our ridge building, and here comes our disturbance for Wednesday, diving towards Texas. Well, let me show you something here. The upper level winds are strengthening. And the stronger these upper level winds get here with the subtropical jet stream and here with the polar jet stream, the more likely you end up with a negatively tilted trough along the east coast. So the observations right now mirror exactly to what the European model guidance was showing two days ago. This is an important factor here. You don't go with a model just based on trends or this and that. You match up the current conditions 
to the best model guidance. And you don't use that model guidance verbatim. You adjust for errors. Known conditions are in place, like those warm temperatures that we're having today. The warm temperatures with our coastal waters. And also the pattern as a whole based on meteorological knowledge. So you take this pattern that we have in place and you go to the model guidance and look what we have here. We'll start off with today, of course, with our very warm conditions. High pressure is shifting off the coast. Here comes our cold front moving through this evening. Temperatures in the mid to upper 60s over the interior and upper 60s to lower 70s along the coast. Tonight, temperatures will slowly fall off into the mid 40s over the interior, upper 40s along the coast, a few lower 50s mixed in in your urban areas. Tomorrow, temperatures won't be moving all that much with high pressure in control. Look for scattered cloud cover and temperatures rising into the lower to mid 50s. I think we can all agree we have a generally warm environment on Tuesday, right? Temperatures are above, above freezing. There hasn't been below freezing temperatures anywhere in the region for over 48 hours. So we have a warm boundary layer in place. Key point. Now, here we have the setup on Tuesday evening. Here's our disturbance. Here's our polar disturbance. They are aligned perfectly to interact along the southeast coast. By the way, if you want a storm to track along the coast, what you want is what's called a neutral tilt, which we almost have here right around the Mississippi River Valley. So if we push this another three hours, we end up with a neutral tilt right here, which means that the trough axis is from north to south. So the environment is set for east coast cyclogenesis. And here we have our low pressure system with the subtropical jet stream. Moving forward, as we jump to 72 hours out, here we are by Wednesday evening. Couple of key points here. One, the alignment is perfectly set up for a negatively tilted trough. Here's that disturbance on the back end, the polar disturbance interacting with the subtropical disturbance, pulling the trough into a negative tilt. And so as a result, your storm track is along the coast. Key point here, note this area right here. You see how there's no upper level low here? What you want is an upper level low here for a major winter storm along the east coast, for snow along the east coast, for very heavy snowfall along the east coast, especially in your major cities, because what that would do is take this high pressure system, put it over Maine, and make it very strong. That would reinforce the cold air, and as a result, the warm air coming in from the Atlantic via the low pressure system is not able to erode the cold air. Thus, you end up with snow. But as you can see in this situation, in which all the models are heading towards, which is strongly supported by the European Ensemble Model Guidance, and the model which, by the way, has best handled the upper level pattern the best, has a low pressure system off the New Jersey coast by about 75 miles. And when we zoom in at, two, at 850 millibars, this right here is your freezing line at 850 millibars. You see warm air invading the coast. At the surface, your freezing line is back here over eastern Pennsylvania. So your rain snow line is further west. Once this low pressure system lifts north and east, the cold air rushes back in. But in this environment, with no blocking in the Atlantic and no high pressure system able to stay over Maine, this cold air gets pushed back into the interior. So as a result, you end up with rain, not snow, in your major cities. And for the most part, your snowfall accumulation is limited because you're not dealing with a very strong Arctic air mass here. You're dealing with a marginal atmosphere as far as cold air and snow production. If we were dealing with the Arctic air mass from last week, totally different story, totally different setup far more dense cold air mass would put up a better fight here. But we simply do not have that. We have an air mass, we have a cold air mass that is coming in gradually that reaches our region just in time as this subtropical disturbance as this low pressure system off the east coast approaches. And so on Wednesday, we have falling temperatures basically by Wednesday morning in the upper 20s to lower 30s over the interior, mid 30s along the coast, 
And then because of the precipitation coming in, temperatures don't move all that much, basically in the mid to upper 30s over the interior, and upper 30s to around 40 along the coast. As the cold air comes in Wednesday night, as that low pressure system lifts north, your rain and snow shifts to the coast from northwest to southeast as your temperatures are falling off and thus your low temperatures by Thanksgiving morning are in the mid to upper 20s over the interior and upper 20s to lower 30s along the coast. And then by Thanksgiving afternoon, zoom out here, that storm is uh, pushing up into the into the Canadian Maritimes, cold air comes in. So by Thanksgiving afternoon, when you're sitting down having your turkey, everything, everything will be trying out. It'll be a bit windy. Temperatures in the upper 30s to lower 40s. It's just gonna be a chilly, raw day. You might have a little bit of snow on the ground along the coast and some of your cold surfaces, like on the top of your car and some of the grass. Over the interior, more significant snowfall. And some locations could see up to a foot, I think, in the Poconos area. So definitely a very impressive storm is setting up. And then thereafter, high pressure will be in control through the rest of the upcoming weekend, with temperatures averaging pretty much near normal for this time of year or below normal. We have low temperatures in the lower to mid-20s on Friday, mid to upper 30s on in the afternoon. Saturday and Sunday, low temperatures in the upper teens to lower 20s high temperatures in the lower to mid 40s. So overall, this weekend is setting up to be on the cold side, but pretty much what you would expect this time of year as we head into the last weekend of November. So based on what I just explained to you, and explaining why this environment really isn't favorable for a cold snowstorm along the coast, let's take a look at our forecast. And this is the forecast that I made via Google Maps, just so you know. Uh, that you can find right on the main page when you land on NY and JPA weather. And of course, if you're looking for a little bit more in information and tired of all the hype, you can always become a premium member for only $11 a month. Now, along the coast in our green section, we're looking at impact time from 6 a.m. Wednesday to 10 a.m. Thursday. That 10 a.m. Thursday is scattered snow showers and windy conditions. The bulk of this storm will be from let's say about 5 p.m. Wednesday through 3 a.m. Thursday. I think that's when the heaviest precipitation will be in place. And most of that will be in the form of rain. So you have a rain-snow mix ending as rain with a little bit of snow accumulation. I have very high confidence in this. You might see a trace of snow or dusting of snow in the grass as the storm is exiting. And don't be surprised to see snow at the start just because of what's called adiabatic cooling but that just is going to be overwhelmed by the fact you have no high pressure supporting the cold air along the coast. A little bit further inland, we're talking about New York City, the eastern suburbs of Philadelphia, central New Jersey. Looking at rain-snow mix, again, would be surprised if it starts off with snow, goes over to rain, back to snow, ends as snow. With trace to two inches of snow, again, mostly on cold surfaces. Watch out for some of those untreated pavements as well. A little bit further west as we go into the Philadelphia metro and the western suburbs of New York up into much of Connecticut. Looking at two to four inches of snow, same scenario here. Starts off as snow rain mix, maybe even mostly snow going over to rain as that warm air invades, back over to snow as the storm starts to end. Because of the faster transition, further inland, looking at two to four inches of snow, with some snow cover on your roadway, so use some caution there. Then as we head in towards the interior for much of North and Central Connecticut, the Hudson River Valley, Northwest New Jersey, and also Southeast and Southeastern and Eastern Pennsylvania, really, to the West of Philadelphia. I'm going three to six inches here. Now this is a bit of a wild card here. It could push up to eight inches. I want to stay below that because again, this cold air is marginal and the snow ratio is going to be rather low here so you're dealing with a wet snow here okay and the best lifting and most of the moisture is going to be along the coast so i was really hesitant to go above six inches in these areas so i'm going with the rain snow mix over to snow quickly wednesday evening let's talk about 5 p.m or so and then continuing on into thursday morning with three to six inches of snow some of that accumulation is going to be difficult in that warm pavement 
Remember, we're at 71 degrees today. Two days later, we're talking about snow. The pavement remembers those warm temperatures. So you have to watch out for that and keep that into consideration as your temperatures fall through the 30s. There could be a threat for some black ice under the snow as well. So use some caution on your roadways. And then the far northern interior, all the way up here around Scranton, Wilkesbury, up towards Poughkeepsie, Kingston, New York, and far northern Connecticut here. Notice I got that sliver here. If you continue this up towards Albany and Massachusetts, basically what I'm looking at here is 6 to 12 inches of snow. This is where you can really get a pretty good snowfall. Colder air, deeper air, the majority of the precipitation will be snow. Maybe start off as a rain snow mix quickly over to snow. And then we go from snow from Wednesday afternoon all the way into Thanksgiving morning with temperatures falling through the 30s and 20s, thus higher snow ratio, thus the potential for 6 to 12 inches of snow. Can this change? Can this end up being colder? Sure, the storm could be a little bit further east, possibly drawing a little bit more cold air. Another solution that I doubt, but is possible, where the storm just explodes, basically leads to very strong lifting, which does, in layman's terms, creates its own cold air. Can that happen? Sure. Will it happen? I see no indication of that possibly happening in this scenario. But of course, I'll keep an eye on it, as always, especially with this being the busiest travel time of the year. So that is the forecast I have. Of course, I'll keep an eye on the latest guidance and also the latest observations and give you the latest details. That is your forecast for today. Of course, I'm your meteorologist, Stephen Martino. Follow the latest weather information at nynjpaweather.com and nynjpaweather on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and LinkedIn. Have a wonderful day, and as always, stay safe out there.